Nicole, the math lady, and today we're talking about how to convert fractions to decimals. Now, if you remember, fractions are really what kind of problem? They are division problems. So if you can remember that, you can always convert a fraction to a decimal by dividing. Remember, two is our dividend, five is our divisor, so let's divide. Five into two. Okay, well five can't go into two, so we're gonna put a decimal point here and a zero. Remember, we can always put a decimal and continue to add zeros until we end up with a whole number. So we're gonna put a zero here, and there's our decimal. Five can't go into two, but can it go into 20? Yes, it can go into 20 four times. Five times four is 20, and we end up with a zero. That means that the decimal for two-fifths equals 0.4, or 4 tenths. Let's take a look at some of the easier uh, fractions to decimal problems. So whenever you see a fraction that is over something that ends in a zero, that's already, it's like already primed to be able to go to a decimal because we know our decimals are in the tenths, hundredths, thousands, right? And isn't that what this is? The tenths, the hundredths, and the thousands. So quite simply, as a decimal, we know this is 0.7, 7 tenths. We know 83 hundredths is 0 0.83, 83 hundredths. And 231 thousandths is 0 0.231. So some problems, we don't have to actually do the division. It's already set up nicely for us. So how does this work for improper fractions? Well, we know that improper fractions are still division problems. So let's go ahead and divide. Four goes into 11. Four goes into 11 two times. That's an eight, and we have a three. We're not done, so we're gonna add a decimal point and a zero. Now I'm gonna bring my decimal point up right away. Let's bring our zero down. Four goes in the 30. Uh, let's see, seven times, which is a 28 and a two. Are we done? Let's keep it going. Add a zero and bring it down. Four goes in the 20, five times, and that means that we are done. So 11 over four, 11 fourths is the same thing as saying two. 0.75, which makes sense because this is an improper fraction, which we know it's, uh, it means that it's a mixed number in disguise, right? So this is two, a whole number, and a fraction, which is really another way of showing a mixed number. We just talked about mixed numbers, and here I have one for you. So how do we turn this into a decimal? Well, really, we, there's two ways we can do it, right? We could turn this into an improper fraction like we just did. So let's do five times four is 20 and one is 21. So this is the same thing as saying 21 over four. And from here, we could go ahead and divide and get our decimal. It's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to notice that the decimal, we know when we're writing a decimal, it's going to be five and only the fraction part is what turns into a decimal. So we can just do the division on the one-fourth and put that fraction, or excuse me, that decimal right there. Let's take a look. So one-fourth is the same thing as saying four into one. We know that four can't go into one, so we add a decimal, a zero, and bring it up. Now let's do it. Four goes into 10 two times, which is an eight, Leaves me with a two. There's my zero. Four goes into 20 five times. And we're done. So the decimal portion of this is just our 0.25. Let's add it to our existing five, which would be 5.25, right? We don't need the zero anymore because the five is going in that slot. So that would be the equivalent decimal for this fraction. So you could do it either way. You could go turn it into an improper fraction and do your division, or just bring that whole number down and just do the division problem on the fraction piece. And that's it, you've seen it all. So you see, remembering that a fraction is just a division problem will always take you to writing an appropriate decimal. Okay, 
Make sure you try these practice problems to make sure you really have it. That's it for me today. Hope you're having a good one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.